Back in 1982, General Motors introduced their first American-built pickups, the Chevrolet S10, and its twin, the GMC S15, later known as the Sonoma. A year later, those pickups were the basis of new compact SUVs, the Chevy S10 Blazer and GMC S15 Jimmy. Although they were most popular as work trucks, they soon became a lifestyle choice for many, and even ventured into limited-run performance models that are heavily sought after today. This is the story of the Chevy S10 and Blazer and their GMC twins. This is my old car. Thanks for so many suggestions to do an episode on the S10 pickup and Blazer. They represent my first pickup and SUV episode. Keep moving, moving, S10 Blazer. And they are the pickups and SUVs I remember the best growing up in the 80s. The larger GM trucks, including the K5 Blazer, are also being considered for a future episode. And yes, I know that as of 2019, Chevy brought back the Blazer name on a mid-size crossover. So technically, that breaks my unwritten rule of not featuring cars, which are still in production. But since the new Blazer doesn't have a co-produced pickup, and well, let's face it, the new one really isn't a truck at all, I'm bending my rule a little bit here. Before I get started, I would like to thank Keeps for sponsoring today's episode. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35? Keeps is an affordable online subscription service to help you stop hair loss. You can do this without ever visiting a doctor's office or even a pharmacy. Instead, Keeps provides you online access to your own prescribing doctor, as well as a network of medical advisors and care specialists to design your own personalized plan to help prevent hair loss or stimulate new hair growth. Your Keeps subscription will deliver treatments straight to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy, and they will even send you refill reminders. Keeps also has an award-winning all-natural thickening shampoo and conditioning system. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash myoldcar or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash myoldcar. Now back to today's episode. Prior to the 1980s, when it came to pickups, GM Chevrolet and GMC divisions offered the CK. Is this Chevy pickup tough enough to move a 95-pound grandmother and this 65-ton home? Let's watch. Full-size pickups that competed head-on with the Ford F-150 and the Dodge D-Series. Unlike what many pickups have become today, these full-size pickups were never intended to be luxurious or the least bit sporty, but intended solely as tough work trucks and their large size meant you typically didn't see them on crowded city streets. Not just because of size, but also their relatively poor fuel economy meant most typically owned them because they needed them, not to convey any particular image, which was, and still is, typically a factor in luxury and sports car sales. But thanks to the gas crisis of the 1970s, GM did offer a smaller pickup, the Chevrolet Love, starting in 1972, which I talked more about in my Isuzu episode. The Love was an Isuzu built import, which Isuzu would later sell in the 80s under their own name, called the Pup. Behold, the Isuzu Pup, the lowest price truck in America. About $6. Because of its smaller size, the marketing for the Love was more youth-focused, with the truck's smaller size and lower price, making them more affordable, which in turn could lead those younger buyers to future larger trucks. But unlike little Econo boxes back then, which GM often imported from Japan and had no problem with touting their Japanese origins. It's Japanese-built, agile, quick, low-priced, and the highest mileage car in America. The idea of a pickup was much more synonymous with America, and GM knew that long-term, their small pickups had to be American-built. But when the new Chevy S10 pickup arrived in 1981 for the 1982 model year, if you bought the base model, it wasn't all-American, since it still had the same Isuzu-built 1.9-liter four-cylinder that had been in the Love pickup. Luckily, GM also offered one of their own V6 engines as an upgrade. The S10 was available in short and long bed models, so the V6 was a better choice for the heavier long bed version. The same truck was also offered as the GMC S15, but at the time it was almost an identical twin to the Chevy, with just changes in the grille, tailgate, and badging. GMC would later differentiate itself from its Chevy twin by offering more upscale options, but early on there was little to no difference between the two. Both the S10 and S15 shared some parts with GM's G-body cars that began that same year, such as the Chevy Malibu, Pontiac Bonneville, Olds Cutlass Supreme, and Buick Regal. By 1983, the Isuzu-based gas engine was gone, although you could still get an Isuzu-built four-cylinder diesel, 
but the more common four-cylinder option was a two-liter unit that was also in GM's J-body cars, the Chevy Cavalier and Pontiac Sunbird. An extended cab version was also offered for 1983, called the Maxi Cab for Chevy and Club Coupe for GMC. That extended cab provided a rear seat, but it wasn't a seat anyone of average size would want to sit in for long. Also by 1983, four-wheel drive became an option. That's why I drive a Chevy S10 4 before. You're in big trouble though, pal. I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. 1983 was also the start of the S10 Blazer, sitting on the same frame as the S10 pickup and sharing many of the same parts. It was the first American-built compact SUV, and it sold well enough for Ford to soon after offer the Bronco 2 and Jeep to offer the XJ Cherokee. Back then, you couldn't just call Chevy's new compact SUV a Blazer, since the same name was already on the full-size Blazer, designated the K5, based on the Chevy CK platform, which led some to refer to the S10 version as the Baby Blazer. It probably would have caused less confusion back then if GM could have come up with a different name, but I suspect they used the same name to imply that this new smaller Blazer was just as tough as the bigger one. And there was a definite size difference, with the S10 Blazer being over 14 inches shorter in length and almost 15 inches shorter in width than the K5. For the first several years, the S10 Blazer remained a two-door model just like its pickup equivalent and shared the same engine choices. The same common naming across the large and small SUVs was done on the Blazer's GMC twin, the Jimmy. When I was a kid, I always thought Jimmy was kind of a silly name and didn't seem to fit the image of a big truck. I later learned that Jimmy was intended as a play on the letters GM. If you were to say those letters as a single word, which sort of sounds like Jim. It's dead, Jim. Kind of the same idea of how the Jeep name was rumored to have come from the letters GP for general purpose vehicle as it was back in World War II. By 1985, the old Cavalier engine was proving to be a poor choice for a heavier pickup and SUV. So it was replaced with what would become a popular option in many GM cars, a 2.5 liter four known as the Iron Duke. This led to both of the Isuzu engine options being dropped for 1986. And by 1988, a 4.3-liter V6 was offered, making 150 horsepower, which Chevy touted in this commercial as being faster and more powerful than the Ford F-150 with a V8. Zero to 60, going identical trailers, Chevy S10 beat both full-size Fords. That's pickup power. That may be because the 4.3-liter V6 shared a similar design with the Chevy small block V8. In 1989, Chevy offered a more off-road focused version of the four-wheel drive S10 pickup, called the Baja. Although the Baja version looked at first as just an appearance package, it did offer a functional roll bar, tubular bumpers, and an underbody shield package. Chevy also offered other appearance packages like the Cameo, Top Gun, and Backcountry models, which were truly just appearance packages, with nothing functionally different. Beginning in 1990, the S10 Blazer and Jimmy began offering a four-door version, which was only six inches longer than the two-door. Now America's best love sport utility vehicle gives you 25% more cargo room and 100% more doors. The four-door soon became the more popular model and came just in time for the competition, with Ford introducing the four-door Explorer just a month later. Although the Jeep Cherokee had been selling as a four-door for over six years by that point, it was the Explorer that would later dominate the compact SUV market, and its famous role in Jurassic Park certainly didn't hurt. If you wanted a little more luxury in your SUV, GM also offered the Bravada starting in 1990, which was Oldsmobile's first and ultimately last SUV. How could Olds expect buyers to fork over premium dollars for a gussied up Chevy S10 Blazer? For the most part, it differentiated itself from a Chevy and GMC siblings by offering their optional features as standard. But it also had GM's trademark extra body cladding, which to me looked more like a Pontiac styling element as opposed to Oldsmobile. The Ford Explorer Eddie Bauer edition was released soon after to compete with the Oldsmobile for this relatively new compact luxury SUV segment. Not surprisingly, Oldsmobile didn't offer a rebadged S10 pickup, as few back then would take a luxury pickup seriously. If you didn't want extra luxury, but instead more performance, you could get it in 1991 with the GMC Cyclone. That Cyclone with an S, not a C. and I am guessing that first letter change may have meant to go along with the base GMC pickup's name changing to Sonoma that same year. The Cyclone was the first high-performance pickup truck, which was a risky and not a typical move for GM to make back then. Now, according to my American colleagues, this is the best pickup truck in the history of the universe. Although it has similar ground effects, like the S10 Cameo, it went far beyond that, with the Mitsubishi-built turbocharger and Garrett intercooler attached to the Sonoma's 4.3-liter V6. 
almost doubling its horsepower to 280, which was comparable to the Corvette back then. Surprisingly, the Cyclone was only offered with a 4-speed automatic transmission, and just like the Ford Model T, you could get it in any color, as long as it was black. Only 2,998 were built for 1991, its only model year. GMC replaced it with a Sonoma GT the following year, now without the turbo, but the 4.3 V6 improved to make 195 horsepower. It was a cheaper option than the Cyclone, but didn't sell as well, with only 806 ever made. In 1992, GMC followed up the Cyclone pickup with the Typhoon SUV based on the Jimmy, offering the same turbo V6 and intercooler as the Cyclone did. The 1992 Typhoon offers a perfect blend of luxury, high performance, and practicality. But being an SUV, which can attract a wider potential audience than a pickup, it sold better than the Cyclone. It's great, okay? With 4,697 total built for the 1992 and 93 model years and was offered in several different colors, unlike the black-only Cyclone. It was also one of the most expensive SUVs you could buy back then, at almost $30,000, and that extra cost went primarily to the improved performance, as the inside still had much the same cheap plastic as the base models. Starting in 1994, the S10 and Sonoma pickups began their second generation with a more aerodynamic body design, but much of the chassis components were carried over from the first gen. Both the Chevy and GMC pickups offered a new off-road package called the ZR2 with 3 inches more ground clearance, almost 4 inches wider than the standard, and 31 inch tires. And two years later you could get the same on the S10 Blazer. Also starting in 1994 was the SS package available on the S10, which came standard with a top end engine, the 4.3 liter V6, a lowered suspension, and some cosmetic changes, but it was no cyclone. And in 1995, a third door was added on the driver's side of the extended cab models that could be opened when the driver's door was open. All with an optional third door. But hurry, before that door slams shut. The Blazer and Jimmy were also restyled in 1994 for the 1995 model year, with the Blazer losing its S10 prefix, since the larger K5 Blazer had since been rebadged as the Tahoe. The automotive press was seriously impressed with GM's new compact SUVs. So much so that Motor Trend gave them its Truck of the Year award in 1995, and it won the North American Truck of the Year at the 1995 Detroit Auto Show. Like the newly redesigned pickups, the Blazer and Jimmy's more rounded appearance made them appear less truck-like and had more interior storage space, which broadened their appeal into the family car market. A year later, in 1996, GM offered one of their pickups to Isuzu, who was growing more dependent on GM to stay afloat. Isuzu gave up their old pickup model for a new one called the Ombre which was based on the S10 that GM sold in Brazil, with some different bodywork than the American-sold version. Oh, somebody help me up! Upon its release in 1996, the Ombre wasn't even available with either a V6 or four-wheel drive. Those options didn't arrive until a year later. With its much smaller dealer network compared to Chevy and GMC, the Ombre sales were also much lower, resulting in its cancellation by 2000. Starting in 1998, GMC began moving more towards the entry-level luxury market with a new trim level for the Jimmy, called the Envoy. For the Envoy models, the Jimmy name was dropped and offered most of the same upgrades that were on the Oldsmobile Bravada. GMC also offered a special Diamond Edition to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the Jimmy nameplate, starting back when it was used on its full-size SUVs. Chevy also joined the renaming trend for upscale models by introducing the Trailblazer trim for the 1999 Blazer. By the time the second gen versions of GM's compact pickups and SUVs entered the 2000s, they still sold relatively well, but were definitely starting to show their age. From the front, the Blazer's chrome laden double decker grill looks very American. The pickups began offering a four door crew cab, and many features that were optional on the two and three door pickups were standard on the crew cab. But despite the addition of the four door, replacement pickups were being planned to begin with a 2003 model year, along with new names the Chevy Colorado, and the GMC Canyon. And this time, Isuzu played a role in the design of those trucks, so much so that Isuzu marketed their own version, called the i-Series, beginning in 2005. The Blazer and Jimmy SUVs were also on their way out of the U.S. by 2003, but production remained in Canada for another year, and 2005 four-door models were only offered as fleet sales. GM didn't put much effort into coming up with new names for the new SUVs, instead just reusing the old high-end trim level names of Trailblazer and Envoy to now represent the entire model lines. Even the Bravada was included in the redesign for 2003, despite GM having already planned to shut down the entire Oldsmobile line in 2004. Reusing old names is still common at GM, 
As I noted before, that Chevy put the Blazer name on its new for 2019 midsize crossover. And more recently, the Trailblazer name returned on Chevy's new Korean-built compact crossover in 2021. Although the old Trailblazer, like the old Blazer, was a body-on-frame truck, the reuse of the Blazer name on a crossover has caused the most fury among old Chevy truck fans. Probably not so much because of its last use on the S10 Blazer, but more because of the original full-size K5 Blazer, considered by many Chevy fans to be the ultimate old-school SUV, a name not worthy of yet another mid-size crossover. Chevy and GMC still sell the Colorado and Canyon pickups, but their larger size has moved them into the mid-size range. Today, if you want to buy a compact, American-built pickup, ironically, your only choice is a new Hyundai Santa Cruz, which is built in Alabama. Ford recently released its new Maverick, but it's built in Mexico. Makes you wonder if GM were to make a small truck to compete, would they still name it the Chevy S10? There's never been a truck like it before. Chevy S10! Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. But this is a pickup truck, and pickup trucks are for moving manure around.